In today's show, we're going to break down a new report finding that 93.8% of U.S. adults have poor cardiometabolic health, setting them up for higher risk of things like severe COVID-19, premature mortality and morbidity from heart disease, strokes, and other cerebrovascular issues, even dementia and Alzheimer's. Now, this is so important. What the data actually finds is that 0.4% of adults over the age of 65 have optimal cardiometabolic health. So that means basically virtually no one over the age of 65 is, is cardiometabolically healthy, which means we have a lot of work to do, my friends. These stats are pretty damning. Now, it's important to talk about this because the media in the last several days, even hours, all of a sudden my news feed is filled up again with COVID-19 and the latest sub-variants and how the new sub-variant from the BA5 Omicron, is, as it's called, is even more transmissible. So we need to double down on masking and social distancing and there's new booster, bivalent boosters and all this crap going on. But look, why aren't we addressing the real issue, which is poor cardiometabolic health? as this data unfolds, and we're going to talk about all the details about blood sugar levels, about medications, the medication use is absolutely insane. The average waist circumference in adults between the ages of 20 and 65 has increased nearly three inches over the last 20 years. Why aren't we talking about this? We need to. So I'm going to share with you the facts. The scientists say, among all cardiometabolic health components between 2017 and 2018, optimal levels were lowest and poor levels for adiposity meaning the main driver of all the cardiovascular-related and, and metabolic-related health issues that we're experiencing here are as a result of gaining body fat. We spend a lot of time talking about ways to lose belly fat, to lose body fat, to improve your musculoskeletal tone, to build muscle mass so that your metabolic rate can increase. We spend a lot of time on this because... The pathophysiology here is the excessive weight gain is driving the cardiometabolic disease and that manifests in symptoms such as high blood pressure, such as elevated levels of lipids and all of the elevations in blood viscosity and traditional cardiometabolic risk factors. And so it's the fat that is driving the problem. So we need to lose the fat, which is why we talk about exercise so much. They go on to say, these results demonstrate a dire situation for the health of the U.S. population and an urgent need for clinical and public health strategies that prioritize obesity treatment as well as prevention, especially given its foundational role in aggravating each of the other cardiometabolic components and risk for severe infectious disease. So these things are, you know, impossible to disentangle. Check out this paper here, Mapping 1 Million COVID-19 Deaths and Unhealthy Lifestyle Behaviors in the United States, Recognizing the Syndemic Pattern and Taking Action. Okay, so this is, again, from the Healthy Living and Pandemic Event Protection Network, the HL Pivot Network a group here out of University of Illinois in Chicago. They say, visualization of the U.S. COVID-19 mortality map in comparison to U.S. maps of several lifestyle behaviors, obesity, and chronic disease show a clear pattern that convincingly demonstrates the syndemic we currently face. Decades of high prevalence of unhealthy lifestyle behaviors laid the foundation for our current unfortunate situation by increasing vulnerability to a novel virus. Again, these are scientists. These are public health advocates that are suggesting that we have to take care of the elephant in the room. We can no longer just continue to mask our obesity problem. We can no longer con continue to give boosters perpetuity for our poor cardiometabolic health problem, friends. We need to start addressing the root cause of the problem and not trying to circumvent the issue and put band-aids on the issue with facial coverings and infinity boosters. We need to address the issue. So here's a paper that is going to reveal some shocking statistics and the data is very clear about the prevalences, particularly with Omicron and this new uh, subvariant. The the increase in disease severity and death is proportionately related to the number of underlying underlying health issues that you have. So. Because so many Americans, unfortunately, have cardiometabolic health issues, we have to start addressing this. And this paper just came out, so I want to break it down. The title of this paper is Trends and Disparities in Cardiometabolic Health Among U.S. Adults Between the Years 1999 and 2018. This research team assessed from the using the NHANES uh, data set, which is a National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey. It's been going on for you know, uh, years now, 30 plus years. Uh, this was an analysis of individuals between the ages of 20 and over 65, and there was 55,000 individuals uh, from the U.S. in this data set. 
We're going to continue to dive into these details. Again, they're relevant. These facts you need to understand so that you can convey to the people in your lives, to your family members who are making poor lifestyle choices about tangible ways that they can improve upon them. Now, before we do, friends, I just want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for hitting that like button. Thank you for sharing this content. It goes a long way to send this as a direct text message because as we've talked about before, Cancer and heart disease claimed 1.2, close to 1.3 million lives over the past several years, which was a fraction, uh, COVID-19 was just a fraction of that. So if we're, if, we're, if we're serious about saving lives, then we have to be serious about preventing heart disease and cardiometabolic disease that are also risk factors for cancer. And so one of the ways that we're going to help you do that, friends, is we have our blood work masterclass live. We launched this about twice a year, and this is a summer edition. We are taking enrollments for our first live training for this summer, which starts next Tuesday, the 19th of July. So I'd love to see you there. I'll put links below. This is an awesome course. We have live content and there's pre-recorded content. We have Q&A. We're going to spend over, you know, 180 minutes together over the next several weeks if you so are interested. So it's one way to get direct access to me and to talk and we're on a webinar format. We can you know, talk about all sorts of ways to improve your cardiometabolic health and to become more resilient, to become less vulnerable to all sorts of conditions and ailments that plague humanity, but especially metabolic health related issues. So I would love to see you there. I'll put links below and you can help support our channel by also being a member of some of our courses. So definitely check that out. Links will be below. So let's get into this. But first, they said something quite interesting about LDL cholesterol. The researchers say LDL cholesterol is a calculated value and inaccurate in the presence of high triglycerides. We're hearing so much more about LDL, and I have several videos that have already been recorded that we're going to roll out here over the next several weeks, but LDL cholesterol is receiving more and more sort of mm, negative attention, not negative attention, but scientists are putting less onus on the importance of high LDL cholesterol and are instead looking at triglycerides, which is in fact one of the one of the two lipid-related biomarkers that was assessed in this data set involving 58,000 subjects because triglycerides tell the metabolic health story. What we can see here, obviously, and we've seen data over the years, that individuals who have a cardiovascular event oftentimes have health the LDL cholesterol levels. It's the triglycerides that are dry, that are a reflection of the poor metabolic health and the triglyceride-rich lipoproteins and these remnant lipoproteins that are worsening the cardiovascular disease because remnant cholesterol, the VLDL, the chylomicrons, they don't need to be oxidized in order to cause uh, plaque and these fatty streaks, that, which is a prerequisite for LDL cholesterol to cause its pathophysiologic damage. It must first be oxidized, but the remnant triglyceride-rich lipoproteins, they need not be oxidized. They are directly atherogenic. So a high triglyceride level is synonymous with high remnant triglyceride-rich lipoproteins, VLDL and IDL and the chylomicrons. Okay, so this is why by, why uh, triglycerides are such a good biomarker to overset to to assess and to analyze cardiometabolic health. It's important to understand that. Okay, here is what I think is the most insane thing, uh, and this is this is it. Um, Adults over the age of 65, and I mentioned this earlier, only 0.4% of adults over the age of 65 have optimal cardiometabolic health. That is, that is ridiculous. So that means if you meet 100 adults over the age of 65, less than one of them will actually have optimal cardiometabolic health. Uh, even worse, 78.1% of adults over 65 have metabolic syndrome, which is a, a cluster of poor cardiometabolic health with adiposity and all sorts of diabetogenic uh, and obesogenic related problems, increased waist circumference, high blood pressure, lipid issues, blood sugar issues. This is a problem. Yet what are we telling these people? What's the media? What are the politicians telling these people at large? You got to wear your mask, maybe two masks. You got to wear the N95. You got to strap a hand sanitizer to your backpack. You need the new booster shot. You need the triple, but it's like, okay, that doesn't help these people make, they still have to eat food. Why aren't we talking to them about the food that they're eating? Why aren't we talking to them about the sleep, about the stress management, about cold showers, about lifting freaking weights, because all of this stuff is related. It's just starting to get frustrating that we're two and a half years into this, and all we are hearing now is about how we need more, newer, and better face masks, and this is insane. Now, in contrast, sorry, there was a small tangent. In contrast here, 23% of adults between the ages of 20 and 34 have metabolic syndrome. 
So again, 78% of adults, certainly eight in 10 adults over the age of 65 have metabolic syndrome, and it's about one in four adults between the ages of 20 and 34. Now, lest I remind you, the pandemic, the lockdowns, the gym closures, the stay-home orders, they completely worsened this. Now, we know that obesity rates increased five-fold in children between the ages of five and 11. This was data from the Annals of Internal Medicine. We also looked at data from the New England Journal of Medicine that found that adiposity in adults in almost doubled. So this data, if it were in real time and were able to get real-time figures from individuals after the pandemic, these numbers would be even worse. So it's important, though, that we understand metabolic syndrome has increased from 36% in adults overall to 47%. So it's nearly one in two adults over the age of 20 has metabolic syndrome. I mean, if you just look across a big swath in the, now, of course, it might be different a little bit regionally. You know, people in the South might have a higher prevalence of metabolic syndrome. It might be like, you know, two in three as opposed to, you know, one in two. So, so it's all over the place, but we need to understand that this is a major issue. This is why we need to compress our feeding windows. This is why we need to encourage weightlifting. This is why we should never have closed the gyms and left the fast food restaurants open. This is why we need to make healthy living part of the conversation going forward. We're going to bankrupt our country and our healthcare system because look, millennials are starting to already have incidences of all these different diseases and all these younger kids as well are already skinny fat. So imagine in 20, 30 years when they're over 65. I mean, it's just, it's really frightening. So we need to start to address these issues now, my friends. Okay, so going on, in parallel, only 15.3% of adults have optimal metabolic health. But among men, this is all men of all ages, this is crazy. 3% of men have optimal metabolic health, while 10% of women have optimal metabolic health. So this is all ages. This is not adjusted uh, for for ages. That is insane. Think about that. 97% of the men that you meet have, opti- have, have poor metabolic health. Only 3% of men, adult men in the U.S. Have, have, are cardiometabolically healthy. Now, I would say this corroborates with my sort of people watching very unscientific, you know, observation of people. Most men I see now, they have man boobs and a belly and they don't exercise and they're, they're wearing masks and they have a hand sanitizer packet on their backpack. It's insane. So when are we gonna, how, why, why, is it, why, why is it so effective to sell people on the idea that they need to sanitize everything but that they don't eat, need to eat healthy, clean food? Why does your environment need to be clean but your food can be dirty? It should be the other way around. Your environment can be a little dirty but your food needs to be clean. This is the, the message. How do we in, indelibly ink that into people's minds to the same degree that the, the, the cleanliness with regards to pathogen minimization has been part of uh, inked into their brain. I, I don't know the solution here. I'm obviously not doing a good job about selling people on this idea outside of a small, you know, we got 550,000 subscribers, which is great. But, you know, clearly there's hundreds of millions of people in the U.S. that have this problem. So we're missing a lot of people. Uh, if you have ideas on, on how to uh, get in touch with these people, let me know. So women, you're doing a much better job than men. 10% of you are meta- have optimal metabolic health, while only 3% of men have optimal metabolic health. Okay. Now, as I mentioned earlier, a big driver of this is the increase in fat gain. Roughly three centimeters, or I'm sorry, um, what is it? Uh, uh, six centimeters, which is about two and a half inches around the waist. So going back to 1999, the average waist circumference in this cohort was 95.5 centimeters. It has increased to 101 centimeters. And optimal body fat percentage has decreased from 33%. So again, 20 years ago, about 33, one in three people had optimal body fat. Now it's only one in four, okay? So that has that has decreased. Now, over the last 20 years, you know, the, the poor obese, the adiposity has increased from 47% to 61%. So that's what they recently found. Now, what's interesting is the levels of lipids 
have stayed the same, but medications are up across the board. And so what we're seeing here, uh, there's, a, there's a doubling in the prevalence of diabetic drugs. So this might be metformin or sulfonylureas or other compounds. Um, you know, uh, the, the, I think it went from like 4% in 1999 to now is like over 10% of the people here in this study population are on some sort of diabetic medication. The same thing happened for blood pressure lowering medications. There was a doubling there and also lipid lowering medications. So, and so these were not specific to statins or fibrates. They were just in the category of, you know, hey, Sally, what are you taking? What are you prescribed by your doctor, you know, for lowering your lipids or your blood pressure or things like that? Um, and, it, and it turns out that there was a doubling in all those. So what was interesting is you do see blood glucose increase and you see adiposity increase in these different figures that I'll share with you on the screen right now. But lipid levels maintained. Uh, despite that uh, understanding that, that deaths from heart disease have increased, okay? Deaths from diabetes have increased. Deaths from metabolic-related diseases like dementia and cancer and other uh, strokes have increased as well. And so we, we know that. Um, but a lot more people are taking medications because the prevalence of these conditions is so high. So again, these are all a bunch of numbers and figures. So what do we do? What's the take-home message? That's all the bad stuff. What do you do? You have to lift weights. You have to exercise your body, friends. You have to move your muscles every day. You have to do something. Like today, for example, I've already walked 7,000 steps. You know, it's about 4 o'clock as I record this. So a lot of people some, sometimes don't even get 3,000 steps. Aim for ten to 12,000 steps per day. Try to do resistance training. Hit every major muscle group at least four days per week. I know that seems high. Fine, three days per week. I, I strive for four. That way I can do some upper body pulling lower body pulling, hitting that posterior chain, hitting the glutes, doing the re reverse hamstring, uh, you know, uh, curls, uh, doing deadlifts, doing hyper extensions, doing um, all sorts of, uh, you know, hip thrusts and different things that we've talked about before. Uh, wide stance, belt squats. There's a lot that you can do. Kettlebell, uh, assisted dumbbell uh, squats. I mean, there's just so many different things you can do for your posterior chain. And then upper body pressing, which would be, you know, um, chest presses, it'd be uh, military presses, shoulders, delts, and things like that. And then you can do lower body pressing, which would be more squat focus. You could do uh, front squats, you could do hack squats, Bulgarian split squats. There's just so much there. Um, the increase in fat mass and the reduction in muscle mass is a major problem. Sarcopenic obesity and, and even more, the loss of bone, the gain in fat and the loss in muscle, also known as osteosarcopenic obesity, is a major problem. That's this triad that is emerging. So um, we, we have to spread the message that light is a nutrient, that we can manipulate the temperature in our environment, i.e. get cold, sometimes get hot, sometimes in the sauna, cold, of course, with cold baths and immersions, like the ice barrel, like our friends over at Morosco Forge. There's all sorts of things that you can do. Um, if you're looking for a sauna, sauna is a great way to detoxify these endocrine disrupting chemicals that can accumulate and, and you know, perturb the metabolic pathways and physiology in your body. So check out High Tech Health. Tell them High, high Intensity Health sent you High Tech Health saunas. They're one of the best at-home infrared saunas that you can get. So there's so many things that you can get and do. Compress your feeding window. Eat less high glycemic index foods. I mean, there's just a whole thing. We, 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 spent, we spent so much time on this, my friends. You know what to do. But you need to get going, especially men, especially if you're over the age of 65. You don't want to be part of that 99.6% of adults over the age of 65 that has poor cardiometabolic health, do you? You don't. You don't want to be among the 97% of men that have poor cardiometabolic health. You want to be amongst the top 1%. And you do that by being different, by lifting weights, by eating low glycemic index diet food, by eating food that's grown or harvested within a 100-mile radius of your home by compressing your feeding window, lifting weights, uh, as I mentioned before, getting cold on purpose, getting hot on purpose, going to bed on time, rising and, and, and falling asleep with the sun. Very simple strategies that we need to implement to be healthy. So friends, thank you for spreading the message that we need to make metabolic health great again in this country. We have a cardiometabolic health crisis. This is actually a crisis when only a, a small fraction of your society has optimal levels of the disease that is quantitatively killing more people than any other disease, that's the actual crisis, not the virus that the super majority of people are surviving. That's not the crisis. So friends, thank you for spreading this message. Thank you for sharing this content. We'll catch you in a future episode down the road. Bye now. Yeah.